So first things first, if you enjoyed that solo and the playing at the beginning of this video, then I need you to hit the subscribe button, hit that like button, and hit the bell icon to be notified when I post new videos. My channel's still really small, so honestly, everything helps, and I really appreciate your support. So a little backstory, that is a track by my friend Savvy, and that was put together and co-produced by a couple of my friends, Cooper Bascom and Seth Brazier. It was a lot of fun to play on, as you could probably tell, and to be frank, I rarely get to play guitar solos in a session context, so I really enjoyed the opportunity, and I think it turned out really well. So I get asked a lot about my approach to soloing, how I improvise, and that sort of stuff. Now, usually in most sessions or even playing live, it's being able to play well-crafted guitar parts, whether that's the part from a record or whether that's creating parts on my own or kind of a hybrid of the two. Maybe I'm combining a couple of guitar parts or maybe I'm just completely improvising and coming up with my own parts on the fly. This is something that I love to do and something that I think is a really important skill for any guitar player to have, but especially if you're wanting to be a regular gigging guitar player or a session player, it's really important to have at least some form of improvisational skills. Now, very rarely are you going to have to play a solo like that unless you're playing in some kind of an 80s, 90s rock cover band, but it's still a good skill to have. And I wanna talk a little bit today about my approach to soloing and how to craft a guitar solo. So without further ado, let's jump into the video. So generally speaking, when I'm writing a solo, I plan to start low and finish high. I'll plan to kind of be around this first pentatonic position or something kind of depending on what key it's in and I usually finish much higher up on the fretboard especially if I'm planning on doing something like I did in this song where there's tapping and then I'm also doing a lot of other fast playing or more legato stuff that seems to work really well for me. Now I usually also incorporate a decent bit of bending in my solos as well which I think always goes a long way, no matter what genre you're playing. Now, since all instruments are really trying to mimic the voice, I usually try to approach it in the way that maybe a singer would sing licks in the song. So I usually pull different stuff from the vocal melody and I incorporate that with bending and legato playing as well. So in this song in particular, I started with bend. From the second to the third, this is in the key of A if you're interested. And then I went immediately to a bend from the third up to the fourth. And then slid back. Largely in the way a vocalist may would do if they were singing something. La, 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 la. See, they're hitting a lot of notes in between the notes. They're not just hitting just the tonic note itself, but they're doing a lot of sliding around in between notes. Which is where vibrato in bending plays a big part in all of the solos that I write. Now next, I wanted to move up the fretboard and I also wanted to kind of add some energy, so I slid up. And even little things like that connecting notes, as opposed to just going down a string and playing it higher up there. Adding it by sliding up to those same notes on the same string I was just on. 
can add a lot of energy and tension. Now for the next little section, all I did was start to kind of pull some different ideas from the melody. So the melody is this la 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 somewhere in there, right? So I'm doing that, but I'm doing it an octave higher, as you saw, and I'm crossing over, and I'm kind of also doing some little frills just to kind of make it not so obviously the melody of the song. Again, a lot of sliding around. Doing that kind of stuff. And that seems to work really well for something like this that's got a very prominent hook. And in the actual track, if you go and listen to it, my solo is sitting pretty underneath the mix. You can hear it going on, but it's not as hot in the mix as it was in this video. And it served the song really well in that way. If it was any louder, it could kind of pull from some of the hook or some of the other elements in the song. So I'm doing that part. which I will pull back from again. Which brings me to another tip for your solos, which is have a theme. If you think of your solos as a small song within a song, you want to have some kind of repetition in the same way that a song has the same chorus multiple times or bridge or whatever it may be. It has some of the same ideas. So I don't want everything to be completely out of left field. I want to have continuity in there. I want to have some of the same ideas repeated, which takes me to the next part of the song. So in the next part of this track, I'm going from that repeated melodic idea that I pulled directly from the melody, and I'm going up to this tapped part. Now, this part was surely to kind of get me to a higher register, and also because they asked for tapping, and that kind of shredding for some energy in the song. So that next part, I'm doing this tapping lick, starting in that same position. And I am intentionally building up to it. So I'm not just doing a randomly tapped sequence. I'm keeping the same bass notes. So I'm going from the first to the second to the third. Then to the fifth, then to the sixth, and then to the seventh. And then it wants to resolve down, so I make sure not to go back to the one there, but I instead stay on the two. And then I go to the next part, which is this faster, faster lick that I'm going back and forth on. But at the very end of the solo, once I get past that, I'm going back to my theme here. So there, I've brought back that melody idea that I introduced in the middle of the solo and of course is prominent throughout the song. So when writing your solos, plan to start low, finish high, incorporate bending and vibrato, think like a singer would in those spots, and don't be afraid to add some speed for energy. And have those repeating themes. Pull from the melody of the song, make a harmony line or something like that that works, that kind of pulls the listener back to the melody, and you'll be on your way to writing great solos. So guys, hope those tips were helpful for you. If they were, remember, hit like, subscribe to this channel, and hit the bell icon to be notified. And Harley says, please subscribe. If nothing else, like because dogs are better than cats. So that's it for this video. See you guys in the next one.